Ever since ChatGPT really pushed AI at the forefront of our collective consciousness, there's been a whole lot of AI technologies and platforms that have skyrocketed in popularity and use. As a dev and as someone keen on continuously increasing my AI literacy, one particular platform that I've been eager to learn to use is Hugging Face. This platform is a go-to destination for building AI apps with open source technology. It's an alternative to OpenAI and Google's closed source proprietary technologies. By the end of this video, you'll have a comprehensive understanding of Hugging Face, including how to start exploring and using AI models. Everything in this video will be high level and non-technical. So here's how I'm breaking down this video. First, we'll dive into a general understanding of what Hugging Face is. We're going to set the stage for understanding the platform's significance in the AI landscape and its commitment to making AI accessible to everyone. Then we'll move on to exploring Hugging Face's feature. We're gonna do a quick tour of the platform's key pillars, namely models, datasets, and spaces. And finally, we'll take a close look at the tasks section on the platform, which is a super dope resource for discovering real world applications and use cases of AI models and helping anyone in getting started with building them. As we witness a surge in AI innovations, there's also a whole new array of opportunities opening up to create and innovate with them. If you were looking for free open source alternatives to OpenAI and Google, Hugging Face is the place to be. Founded in 2016, Hugging Face's main mission is to democratize AI. They envision a world where AI is accessible to everyone. This platform isn't just a tool, it's a movement towards open source technology, allowing anyone to easily build, train, and deploy custom AI models without needing extensive knowledge of machine learning or programming. So in really simple terms, it's a platform where you go to discover, build and share AI apps. It's one of the most valuable AI tech companies right now. As of August 2023, Hugging Face isn't just a player, but a leader in the AI industry valued at how much do you need? One baby, baby, one baby, baby. How much? Corporation. So, 4.5 billion dollars. It's often referred to as the GitHub of the machine learning world due to its large repository of AI models, AI datasets, and AI apps. Hugging Face is a shining example of the open source movement. It's also a community hub for any AI researchers, developers, AI enthusiasts to share knowledge and expertise. So yeah, there's really an emphasis on community here. That being said, let's backflip into the platforms and its features. In order to find your way around Hugging Face and effectively navigate it, you need to understand the foundational pillars that form the basis of the platform. Models, datasets, and spaces. There's also a task section that I wanna highlight, but we'll come back to that in part three of this video. For now, let's just focus on those three foundational pillars. Okay, before we dive into the details of the first foundational pillars, let's have a quick refresher or primer on AI models and their training data. Cause we're about to encounter a whole bunch of them and it's crucial for everyone, especially those who are not technically inclined to grasp the essence of what they are and understand the diversity that they offer. It can be difficult to find the right model on the platform because there's so many to choose from. So I really wanna make sure that my non-technical folks really understand what's going on here. When you hear the term AI models or models, it refers to complex algorithms that are trained to perform specific tasks, such as understanding language, recognizing images, and generating predictions for a whole bunch of stuff. This glass cube symbolizes the initial state of an AI model, clear, undefined, and untrained. As you introduce different colors representing different datasets, the cube can reflect these, demonstrating how the model learns and adapts. By changing the colors reflected in the cube, you can visualize the concept of training an AI model on various types of data. This training data spans a vast spectrum from visual data like pictures, auditory data like sounds, video data, text, and much more. When AI models are specifically designed to focus on just one type of data, they are known as unimodel AI models. But the thing is, the world isn't one dimensional. We live in a lively mix of sights, sounds, and language all working together. So to mirror this complexity, when AI models are trained using a combination of different data types, we call them multimodal AI models. Okay, time to hop on the computer. 
All right, so when you're all signed up and logged in, you're gonna be greeted with this interface here, which is basically your home dashboard. Uh, so let's move on to our first pillar here, the model section of the site. All right, so when you get here, you're gonna be confronted with a big list of AI models. Uh, you can see there's over 460,000 of them here. And then if you scroll all the way down, you can see that there's uh, over 15,000 pages worth the models. So it's pretty overwhelming, but luckily we have a very helpful panel on the left side here that gives you a bunch of categories for these AI models. So for example, you have a multimodal category here, which we uh, spoke about earlier. We have a computer vision one and an NLP one here. This way of organizing and classifying them makes it easier to know what each model can do and how it can be used. So if you come in here and let's say you wanted to explore uh, models in the computer vision category and you wanted to specifically have a look at the image segmentation one, you can click on that and it's gonna filter that big list of models down to, in this case, 414 models that are specialized in image segmentation. So let's check out this one here. All right, so when you click on a specific model, you're directed to a page full of useful information about it. Here, you're gonna typically find a description of the model. This section gives you an overview of what the model does and its primary functions. It's a great starting point to understand the model's capabilities and the type of tasks that it's designed for. On the right-hand side here, you also have a demo section. Most of these models come with a demo that lets you test and see the model in action. It's a hands-on way to see what the model can do. It's pretty nifty here. So in this instance here, we have a picture of a guy uh, standing in the middle of the road and the AI model basically segments each aspect of this picture. So you have the background here that's segmented. You have the person's hair, their hoodie or upper clothes here, their pants, left shoe, face, etc. So for this model here, you have a bit more explanation as to how the model goes about evaluating each item in the picture to be able to come up with these segmentations. So another interesting thing here is that for each of these models, you'll typically also find some licensing info. So this licensing info is pretty important, especially if you're planning to use this model in a commercial application because it outlines any restrictions or permissions. So don't play yourself. Make sure to review this if you plan to use the model in a business setting. You typically want to look for the Apache 2.0 license, which is the most permissive business friendly one. The MIT license is also another pretty permissive one. So this one here has actually an MIT license. One thing to note is that sometimes you'll notice that not all models are as detailed and filled with demo showcases. Some might be cutting edge research projects or others just like smaller scale experiments. So because of that, these models might lack some comprehensive documentation or interactive demos. This doesn't diminish their potential. It just indicates that they might be more suitable for experimental use or for those who are looking to contribute to ongoing research and development in the AI field. So we can see that this is the case for this model, for example which is looking a little bit sparse. But the cool thing here is that Hugging Face is an open source platform, so you could actually ask to contribute more information if you had more knowledge or if you had a chance to test this AI model yourself and wanted to contribute a bit more information to it to help other people get a better idea of what it does. All right, so moving on to the second pillar, data sets. So in the world of AI, data reigns supreme as the backbone of training AI models. So Hugging Face offers a diverse array of data sets. These are critical resources used to train or evaluate AI models, and they span multiple languages, domains, and tasks. So as you can see here, the page is laid out pretty similar to the models in a sense that you have a bunch of data sets here, but you are able to, to kind of categorize and uh, filter them down according to the specific category you're looking for. You might not actually need to delve into this section too much if you're primarily using pre-trained models. All right, so now let's move on to our last pillar, spaces. This is where you get to deploy, showcase, and share AI-driven apps you've made and see the ones that other people have made as well. So you can also search through the spaces section here to find a specific AI app you might have heard of. So for example, I saw this one on Twitter a couple of weeks ago. The way this works is that you basically feed it an image or a picture of a person here. You give it a motion sequence and then the AI model will produce a animation where the person in the photo moves according to your specified motion sequence. So we have a couple of examples here. You have Mona Lisa, her picture plus the motion sequence makes her run. A couple more here of this picture of these two ladies dancing away. All right, let's revisit the task section I mentioned earlier. If 
you're looking to flesh out an idea for an AI app, this section is an ideal platform to explore AI models and their real world use cases in greater detail. It helps you come up with practical ways to address real world problems. So when thinking about ideas and startup plans, there's typically two approaches. A top-down approach, it typically begins with like a broad market need or a high-level concept, and then you seek out specific solutions or technologies to address that need. In contrast, a bottom-up approach starts with specific capabilities or tools, and then look for potential problems or market needs that these can address. So this task section on Hugging Face naturally supports a bottom-up approach. It allows developers or anyone looking to build to first understand the capabilities of these AI models and then think about how these can be applied to solve existing problems or create new opportunities. So yeah, task is really just designed to inspire. Okay, so here we are on the task page of the platform. So as you can see here, these tasks are again broken down into the same categories we saw earlier. Uh, so we have the computer vision here, NLP, audio, etc. So let's have a look at this text classification one, for example. So again, we land here and we get this broad overview of what this field of study in AI is all about. Here you have a quick visual representation of how the text classification model works. Sometimes you'll also get a video giving you a quick one minute explanation of the information that's available in this task page. So if we scroll further down here, we have this task variance section, which basically means that within the broader field of text classification, there's more specific types of tasks that this model can perform. On the side here, you have a list of compatible software libraries that can be used with the models. Underneath here, you have a demo section. Below that here, you have a section that readily provides you with models that this text classification task falls under. So you can see that you can browse through 45,000 of them. Similarly, you have a bunch of data sets related to this task that you can browse through. In this little section here, you have the spaces section, which is basically example of AI apps people have built using text classification AI models. And then you have this final metrics for text classification part, which is basically information about how well AI models do their job. So as you explore the task section, similar to what we saw in the models, you, you'll see that some tasks are packed with details while others are not as developed. For example, if we look at this mask generation one, you can see that it's also a little bit empty here. So again, this difference is because certain AI applications are still in the early stages and need more information or testing. But again, you can offer to contribute to more information and test it yourself. All right, so we're wrapping up on my video introduction to Hugging Face. I encourage you to keep diving into the platform, play around and explore more fun and interesting AI models. I wanna leave you with an interesting thought. I found this insight Clément Delange, CEO of Hugging Face, shared with TechCrunch the other day. AI is the new way of building all software. It's the most important paradigm shift of the decade. And compared to the software shift, it's going to be bigger because of new capabilities and faster because software paved the way. Hugging Face intends to be the open platform that empowers this paradigm shift. What we're seeing here, especially with platforms like Hugging Face, is a clear indication that we're moving from an era where software reigns supreme to a new era where AI models are taking the lead. It's becoming more and more evident that AI models will soon be as commonplace as software is in our world today. So I think that getting familiar with them, understanding them through a platform like Hugging Face is a great way to position ourselves for success in this new AI era we've entered. The more I was exploring this platform and doing research for this video, the more it was hitting me. So I thought this would be a great note to leave you guys with. Thanks for tuning in to this video and uh, I'll see you guys later.